Hi, my name's Jonathan Hicks. I'm at the UK Games Expo 2019, and today I'm joined by... Mark. And Mark from Grand Gamers Guild. And we're displaying Endeavour, Age of Sails, which is a kind of, the sort of engine sieve building element here on your player board, and then expansion uh, into the various colonies. You're kind of colonizing. So you start off in Europe here, you can see, and you're expanding to India, for example, or the Far East, or the Caribbean. Okay, so there's all these different areas around here. But to start off with, you're kind of based, obviously, in Europe. Uh, now, it's very, there's a very nice guide, actually, on the board that makes it clear exactly what you're doing all the way through the game. So the first thing you always do, everyone does on their turn, is they get a new building. And these tracks effectively show you how powerful you are in different areas. So this top track is like the building track, and depending on how far you've got your cube, you can build certain levels of building. So this is level one, level two, level three. So because I'm in the level three section, I can buy a level three building. And there's a whole pile of buildings here. So they're in nice columns. So it's one, two, three. So I can buy any building from this section here. So let's imagine I decide to buy this building here. Then it goes on the next space here. And typically, it's going to give you stuff. So this will bump up my vase track, which is this one here. So that will bump up to there, which means I'm now going to get this instead of this. So that's great. We'll come back to that in a second. Buildings, incidentally, can also give you actions. If there's a space here, then that will lock an action you can use in the action phase. So we get a building. Then you get more colonists, or that are kind of workers, or population. Population, OK. So according to where you're on this track, so in this case, I'm going to get five. So you kind of grab five. I'll just grab a pile for now. But you take a bunch of those, and you stick them in your supply here. Now, these are discs I've previously used on actions. And the next thing is you sort of, if you pay them, then they come back and work for you. And this track shows you how many I can afford to pay. And I managed to get my cube all the way up to the end here. So that's uh, five, you can see that. So in theory, I could take up to five of these people back here. So now I've got loads of people to do actions. And obviously, I've got, I'm freeing up spaces to do actions as well. Then we each take our actions. And uh, this is where you can use the actions on here. So for example, the flag is the colonization action. So you stick one disc here, and then you take another disc, and you stick it somewhere on the board. Now, it has to be a, board, uh, a section that you've already got uh, that's kind of unlocked. So you can see there are these tracks around the edge. Until you've got through this track and unlocked this, you can't actually colonize this area. Uh, but Europe's nice and free, so I could colonize Great Britain. Great. So I'll plonk my disc here. And you're going to get the bonus. This is going to bump me up on the shield track. So this is the track at the bottom. We'll come back to that track in a bit. Other actions you can take. Uh, you can go here. This, this uh, box icon lets you draw a card, essentially, if that's right. Um, the cards kind of increase in powerfulness. So this all starts with one and then two, and the rewards get better. Uh, this is the victory point symbol, incidentally. So because I've got, oh yes, fortunately I've got four presents. This is the required present here. I could take this card and add it to my tableau. Oh, but it's full. Oh, what do I do there, Mark? If, the, if it's actually full. Sure, so the card can go in your tableau and you can gain the benefits till the end of the round. And at the end of the round, according to the chart, you check your cards and you discard whatever you want and then lower your asset tracks accordingly. So in this case, you would probably choose to keep the points and then bump down maybe your weaker culture and salary track by one. So for now, I could just stick the card on the end of my track? Yes. Okay, great. So I'll plug this down here and that's the box icon. The shipping icon is kind of how you unlock the areas. So you can see I've actually started unlocking this area here. Um, again, I'd have to put one disc here and then take another disc and I could unlock the next section there, which gets me another vase. That's great. That's going to bump up my uh, population track. And effectively, you're trying to burn through these. Once you've got through these, then you've unlocked the area and you can start to colonize in the various sections in here as well. So you've got to unlock the track first. Uh, you can see Mark spent quite a bit of time here unlocking this section, which allowed him to get presents. There are a couple of other ways, though. Once the section's been unlocked, you can actually cheat, which is what I did. So even though I didn't manage to do anything on the unlocking track, I could jump in on this little sailing track here, um, and then that's how I'm able to get my influence in. So you can see in a multiplayer game, different people are going to be sort of helping each other, potentially collaborating to unlock different areas. But once an area is unlocked, then people can potentially rush in in different ways and unlock the areas. Uh, so yes, you take a bunch of actions. Uh, although you can attack people as well. That's quite fun. So. There's an attack action. So let's say, um, let me find a good example. So let's imagine for some reason I was able to get uh, here. You might notice there were some spaces between. And if you unlock the ones on both sides, then you get the bonus. But I can't unlock the one on this side because Mark's here unless I attack him. 
So I plonk one disc here. Uh, one disc is kind of burnt in attrition. There's the people who died. And uh, if I had a third disc, because you need a third disc to displace it, then I kind of kick Mark out. He dies, so his disc goes away to him. And then I will be able to claim the thing in the middle. So that's how attacking works. It's very deterministic, um, but it makes it clear exactly how you get the stuff, how it works. Oh, actually, that's going to go on here and bump up my bottom track again. Now, what is this bottom track? Well, uh, Mark was saying earlier, in terms of the various cards here, you can only keep up to the bottom limit here. So there are four cards, so I could keep up to four cards. So I'm going to have to burn a couple of these cards. And typically, you're going to take the lower ones that aren't as good. These would slide down, and then I'm going to get the stuff. But if I lose these cards, I'm actually going to lose the stuff. So the jar track would go down by one, and then my money track would go down by one. So that's going to happen at the end of every round. And then you kind of uh, first player marker moves on, and you reset, and you carry on. A uh, couple of other little things. Uh, there's uh, the interesting slavery option here. So you can when you take the cards. Because Mark's only got two presents in here, it's very difficult for him to get these more expensive cards because you need five presents. Um, but the slavery ones are much easier to get. So we could always get this. And these typically give you nice stuff pretty early on. You know, you use the slaves and you get lots of stuff quickly. It's very attractive. Except the problem is that as you go through the game, if somebody manages to enlighten Europe, if, there's, if they can get enough presents here and take the abolish slavery card, then all the slavery cards stop working. So this will kind of be a dud now. The slaves are freed. Hooray! And actually, then you flip over the card and it's worth negative victory points at the end of the game. Yeah, serves you right. <laughs> so <laughs> that's more or less how the slavery works, which is nice. They've dealt with that very well, I think. Uh, you play over a bunch of rounds trapped by the building. So once the building track fills up, that's the end of the game. Um, most points wins. What do we think? Uh, well, I mean, we're lucky enough to have Mark teach us, but to be honest, it is an incredibly logical, straightforward game to learn. Once you picked up the symbology and everything, it took us no time at all to just have the engine going, where we're going to head to what we're trying to do. I love the feeling of expansion it gives, considering I do feel like like with it looks look go to the Caribbean. I had presents by initially shipping there, so I'm going there, and they go, oh those guys, which then allow me to start colonizing there and also allow me to start grabbing getting goods from there. So I do feel like I'm expanding on the board. And there is a real sense of a little bit of area control and the fact that I don't want people removing my presence from the board. It's not as painful like if somebody combats remove removes a disc. I don't lose the stuff I've already got but it makes it more difficult for me to take goods or to put and stuff. So you, there is a little bit of fight there. It's not, it's not brutal, but it is, it is there. Uh, I like the kind of tracks. They all internet quite well and the fact that I need to make sure I'm getting enough money in to pay for my workers and, yet, and also still be able to keep them the cards. I need to put the shield track to get that. And so you're kind of constantly managing. I need to keep them at a good level where I can do bits and pieces of each while make sure I get better buildings. Yeah, it all works really well. I think it worked really well as we play as two, obviously, because me and Jonathan. I reckon with more people on the board, there'll be a lot tighter, there'll be a lot more fighting for control of areas, which I think will add a little bit more tension. They'll make it even better. Okay. Yeah, I had a great time. I really liked it. The player board stuff feels like a light through the ages, which I love, and that works really well. As Mark was saying, it's very clear what you do on your turn. It's very clear what all the different symbols do. Iconography is fantastic. No problems with any of that. Uh, and the expansion on the, play on the main board in the middle, though, is really satisfying. It's like, oh, yes, I can go here and get this stuff, and oh, I can unlock that bonus, and oh, but I can't unlock that bonus because Mark's there. Oh, how can I get rid of him? So it's very straightforward, very clear. It gives you loads of options without overwhelming you with the complexity. So I think they've done a great job with this one. Uh, Mark, is this currently available to buy? Absolutely, it is available here at UK Games Expo. Uh, it's available online. And actually, I'll take a moment to plug that the expansion Oh. To Endeavor called Age of Expansion is going to be hitting Kickstarter on June 18th. So it's wow. a whole, everything you just learned, the mechanics are basically the same. They add in three new concepts. But what we'll do is we're replacing all of the cards and we're replacing all of the buildings. So it's the same gameplay experience and yet at the same time completely different. It's give you the extra variability. Exactly. Okay, great. Uh, and presumably if you back the Kickstarter, you can buy the base game and also get the expansion along with it. Is that yes, right? Yes, absolutely. The uh, base game will be available through the Kickstarter as well. All right, great. Thanks very much. Thanks for playing. That was Endeavor.